This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Morency. Level 3 has uh, begun. Sirius XM Channel 159 will rejoin us momentarily. We're kicking on Sports Good Radio and Television Networks. Our AM Radio affiliates will join us in Level 3 as well. Our boy Wes Clayton will be in the house. Uh, sniper Picks kicking it uh, with us. You know what, uh, Wes? Uh, some great picks. Remember last time he was with us, he gave us uh, Alabama. It was Alabama-Auburn, and he was right about it. He also gave us the Texas Rangers to win the World Series at 12-1. to 1. So he's got a good track record going on. He's already got a couple of Super Bowl props ready to go. And uh, he's got a pick for the uh, Wake Forest Pittsburgh. Uh, sorry, who is it? Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, is it Wake Forest and Pittsburgh? Yeah, Wake, Wake and Pittsburgh. Um, I was thinking about um, I was thinking about Georgia Tech and North Carolina tonight. But it is Wake Forest and Pittsburgh uh, tomorrow night. So as you can see, we're starting to talk more college basketball. We kind of just spent the last hour talking college basketball, actually on the show with March Madness approaching. But don't forget, we've got the Super Bowl uh, coming up. Or I should say the big game. Shout out to everybody joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159. This is Sports Rage. I am Game of Red Sea. Level 3 has begun. A uh, program announcement for everybody starting on Monday, which is uh, February the 5th. So Super Bowl week starting on Monday. We're not going to be on our regular scheduled uh, program, uh, our time. right? We're going to be on at 8 o'clock Eastern. 5 o'clock Pacific, and we're only going to be on for two hours. So uh, don't miss out. We're jam-packed with guests already. we got some cool stuff uh, going on. We have uh, Sheena Bathory joining us from uh, Power Slap. Uh, Sheena Bathory uh, from Power Slap. And you know how people always say, like, oh, you know when they, they get fighters and, like, slap, you know what I mean? But so, no, I will not ask her to slap me in the face, no. Shout out to everybody joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159. This is Sports Grade on the Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. It's 9388 right now for the Golden State Warriors. We're on the Warriors in this game. Uh, we've got the Warriors plus the one and a half. There's nine minutes left in the game. Pretty high scoring game, actually, like every NBA game, like most NBA games. Total is 225 and a half right now. That's a little light, isn't it? It's listen. It's ninety three ninety. There's under nine minutes left, but know, this, this total feels a little light. We're gonna jump in on the over here, even though we're already on. We're already on the uh, Golden State Warriors. The Kraken and the Sharks are are scoreless after two periods of play at the tank, the Shark Tank. All right, basketball over two twenty five and a half. It's even plus money. I'm not gonna go crazy here, but I think we can get to two twenty six. Uh, we gave you the over 151 and a half in Loyola, Marymount, and Gonzaga. We're at the half right now. It's a 45-29 at the half. The new in-game total is 153 and a half. So we're sort of on pace. Gonzaga are up by 16 here. Uh, meanwhile, UNLV are up 34-28 on Fresno. They were laying seven and a half, so it's right around the number, and they're currently ten and a half point favorites. So the Super Bowl, that point spreads up to two right now. And it's like the Baltimore game, in which I talked about it all week last week, about spite. I said, you know, why are people betting on Baltimore? Like, KC or the play, right? And then it got all the way up to five before kickoff. And I'm like, this is crazy. You just can't do it. You just can't do it. Now, this number is more manageable. San Francisco just need to win the game. But I really can. I usually don't try to middle games. Like, I don't do this with the Super Bowl often, right, where I try to play both sides. But in this instance... I don't know if it's going to get to two and a half, but it could. I don't think it's going back down. You know what I mean? Like the market set it at two and a half, and then the betters came in and sort of moved it, but now it's back again. It's back to where they originally wanted it to be. So where I'm going with this is it's not like the odds makers are in a hurry, like, oh, we got to make this one and a half or one. No, they made it two and a half to begin with. The public made it one, and now it's settling back in. So, does it go any higher? Probably not, right? But for teaser players, and generally, if you've got, like, 16 games going on on a regular Sunday and, you know, college football, and you shouldn't tease college football, but when there's a million games, you don't really have to tease anything, right? You could, but you don't don't really have to. There's enough options out there. But you get into these one-game situations, and obviously you have to look at all the different angles that you could possibly think of that you think you can make money and, and come up with a win with. And I personally think that there's going to be enough points in this football game to get it over 47 and a half. But 
the Kansas City Chiefs. You get the, the Chiefs teased up to plus nine, over 40 and a half. I can live with that. And then I come back and I take San Francisco uh, to win the game on the money line, and I take the over uh, in the football game. And then there's a legitimate chance. I don't believe in betting on plays that will nullify each other, like the hedge and stuff like that. I like. I don't mind getting cocky and trying to win on a, you know multiple side different angles of this. Look, it's sort of like Brady, and we're going to go over the scores. We're still early right now, but I was thinking about it. Remember all the Tom Brady Super Bowls? Dude, they never won by more than like, you know, they won by seven once. Like all the time it was three points, three points, three points. Like look at Kansas City's games as well. They're all close. Like it's not, you know, it's not like Kansas City, like San Francisco 49ers used to smash games in the Super Bowl. Level three has begun. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci. The principal players, the hustlers, the people, the bustler, but everybody else in between. Let's do this thing. Countdown to kickoff. Continue. Super Bowl 58. There's been some line movement once again. The daily line move. Uh, the money has uh, come back in on the San Francisco 49ers. There are twos uh, right now. They opened up as two and a half point favorites. It went all the way down to uh, minus one. And then it was it's crept back up right now up to uh, to minus two. Again, right now, despite the fact that Patrick Mahomes is the kingpin, despite the fact that uh, Tom Brady is taking offense to people uh, comparing Patrick Mahomes to his greatness, people are starting to bet on the San Francisco 49ers. We're going to do this sniper pick style. He was on fire last week on the show, so we we said, hey, we'll bring him back after the big Alabama uh, win last week against the Auburn Tigers. So we're going to get into the props and get you caught up to date with some of these other numbers uh, as well as far as the Super Bowl uh, is concerned. Travis Kelsey is the most popular touchdown prop uh, bet uh, right now on the market, and understandably so. He's got 19 touchdowns in 21 playoff games. I mean, love him or hate him, and Travis Kelsey's become a polarizing figure. Don't let it, don't let your disdain for Taylor Swift overlook the fact that Travis Kelsey's a badass. And, yeah, he slowed down a little bit, and, you know, he might not be as athletic and jump in and hurdling people, but you put him in a 60-game, 60 60 you know, setting, 60-minute game setting, and we see, man, 11 for 11. He was targeted 11 times. He had 11 catches in that football game. All right? Like, it's almost insanity that we're, like, even considering betting against Mahomes and the Chiefs. But no one ever said I was sane. <laughs> no Nobody ever said uh, I was a sane man. We'll get you caught today with the updated MVP uh, numbers. I, I still believe that Christian McCaffrey is a gr- good MVP play at these numbers at plus 480 right now before they start to come down, and they're already starting to come down. This is Sports Rage. end up winning outright as a four and a half point underdog at kickoff last week they're headed back to the super bowl yet again they were phenomenal Vinny, in the first half and they were phenomenal against miami in the first half too a lot of motivated players and look you got to hand it to them youthful players playing in a great system by spagnolo and we know how great of a big game coordinator steve spagnolo is newswire only on sports grid Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
Oh, it's a beautiful time. NBA players are going wild. If I had to guess, a lot of people are going to get real angry. No defense, no defense, no defense. Uh, see, I want people to understand this, okay? Because we're always honest. When I take that big pause, that means we're thinking about betting big. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means. Individual success. He should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news. Trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, quarterback. coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime a time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late night. We waited for a one and a half. We got a yeah. Didn't like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moranzi. The pips, the players, also some people to bust them and everybody else in between. It's the Twisted Tuesday, although it's hard to, to keep up with these days, actually. I'm, I'm all fired up. Countdown to the Super Bowl uh, is on. And uh, a special programming announcement. We're going to be kicking it live uh, all week long in Las Vegas, Nevada, from the MGM Sportsbook. Uh, from the MGM Sportsbook. Uh, 5 o'clock local time, so 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock uh, Eastern on all these uh, networks that you're tuning into uh, right now. All right, let's bring in uh, let's bring in uh, the sniper right now, some sniper picks. And I'm looking at the props right now uh, at the Super Bowl, and I'm trying to find some – I want to find total penalties uh, for this game, but I don't see it posted uh, just yet. Let's bring in uh, Sniper Wes right now. What's going on, Wes? How you doing tonight? Doing great, Gabe. Thank you for having me back on. Um, you know, I haven't really looked at uh, the props yet, but one thing I will, uh, one funny thing I heard actually was um, there is a parlay that you can bet on a certain book. It's uh, Travis Kelsey to score a touchdown parlayed to Taylor Swift win song of the year. And that's a plus oh, that's... action. I don't know if you want, <laughs> I don't know if you want any of that game, but. <laughs> you know, so what, I don't know what the competition for the other songs of the year are, but to be honest, I'm kind of proud of myself that I will not be playing any Taylor Swift props or anything like that. And I'm not a Swift hater or anything like that uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But, no, the prop I wanted to bring up here, and I saw something to it. One of the refs, actually, is going to become one of the first refs on the crew to play in a Super Bowl and to uh, to ref in a Super Bowl. It's pretty cool. I wanted to get to that. But as far as the head referee of this game is concerned, I you know I don't need to tell Buffalo Bill fans this guy's name. You're going to cringe, Bill Vinovich. So Bill Vinovich, Bill Vinovich is going to be the referee of this Super Bowl. Bill Vinovich has had it in for the Bills, all right, over the years. He just has. I don't know why, but it is. And you know he's a polarizing figure, Vinovich. But he actually refereed. This is what's interesting. He refereed the last Super Bowl between the two of them. So they played four years ago, Super Bowl Fifty Four, Kansas City, San Francisco. He only called nine penalties. So he is known for letting stuff go. He only called nine penalties for 69 yards in that Super Bowl. So they bring him back. And if there's one thing we've seen, Wes, this year in the playoffs, and not just the playoffs, but in the last month of the regular season, even the last, whatever, two months, they let everything go, bro. Like, they used to call pass interference on everything. They're not now, right? You know, you're getting – we we see last week, guys are tripping dudes. You get away with it. As long as you don't do something stupid like the Baltimore Ravens, like after the play, you're going to get away with a hell of a lot. I can't wait to see the 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 penalty prop. It's usually about 10 and a half, 11 and a half penalties uh, for the game. 
and we have two pretty disciplined football teams here too. I'm going to be betting the under penalty prop, even though I haven't seen it yet, but I like this number that Vinovich uh, only called nine penalties last time. Not a bad take. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, they let them play for sure. Um, you know, I remember a couple of years ago they had uh, you could review the pass interference, which turned out to be a disaster, which they got rid of after one year, which, you know, I'm kind of glad they don't have that anymore. But, um, yeah, no, it's not. They're probably going to let them play. They do that typically in the Super Bowl. And uh, Vinovich, obviously, if he did it four years ago, it's probably the game plan to do it again. I mean, who wants to watch a bunch of penalties, especially a lot of people that don't watch football in general are watching this game and the NFL wants them to get into football. So they don't want to bunch of penalties it's just boring football right so yeah it's not a bad take well one of the reasons one of the reasons why a lot of these games have gone under in the playoffs is because of that because they're they don't call stuff right in a regular season normally they'll call stupid defensive holdings automatic first down they've been they haven't been even with the roughing the quarterback for the most part with the exception of Mahomes every now and then and even Mahomes got lit up like, Mahomes got hit in the head a few times the other day, and they didn't call it. They called the Ravens once because Buddy punched him in the face in front of everybody, right? It was blatant. Like, they had to call it. So, there's – and it's not just the Super Bowl or Vinovich. I'm telling you, they, the NFL as a whole, people criticize the refs so much, no matter what they do. They're either too flag happy and or, oh, you know what, you know, they're letting too much go, and you've got to call that. But they've let a lot go, like with pass interference. A good example, guys, is the um, in and on the interception of Lamar Jackson threw, all right, in the end zone, dude. Like Buddy got mauled in the end zone. He got tackled, all right. Like he got taken down, and the ball got intercepted in front of him. But the thing is, even though he got taken down, it was still a bad pass. Like the referee's judgment was like, yeah, you know what? You threw a right to him, right? So I'm not going to save your ass with the penalty here. You're going to see this in the Super Bowl as well. So what are your early thoughts on the side of this game, though, with uh, what do you make of San Francisco being the two-point favorite? Well, I do agree that the line is probably where it needs to be. Um, You know, obviously the 49ers, they have the revenge from the loss, you know, when they played in Miami four years ago. Um, but, you know, remember the Niners, they were up by 10 points in that game in the fourth quarter, and they found a way really to lose the game. And what's funny about this Niner team, Gabe, is, you know, they played completely the opposite in the postseason as they did the regular season, right? They played from ahead most of the year, with the exception of a couple games that they lost. But, you know, they're used to blowing everybody out. All of a sudden, they come into the playoffs, and they have to play, you know, comeback king against the Packers and the Lions, which actually that could bode well for the 49ers because – you know, now if they do get down in the Super Bowl, they can kind of play that we've been here before card, right? So um, it, it's hard for me to really go against Mahomes, to be honest with you. Um, you're getting him as a dog again, and it almost seems like people never learn, right? I mean, you get Andy Reid as a dog again. Feels like I've seen this movie before, Gabe, and um, it always seems to be a happy ending for Kansas City. I mean, if you do remember, so this is the second Super Bowl where Mahomes is an underdog in that the first matchup, Kansas City was actually a one and a half point favorite. Then they played Tampa and they were favored by three and they lost that Super Bowl. Then in Arizona, they were a one and a half point dog to Philly and they won that game. And now they're in Vegas and they're a plus two dog to the Niners. And I, I heard you talking about the line movement before I came on as well. So I, I don't know about you, but I even saw one at Bet Online yesterday, but now it's back to two. So the line's kind of moving back and forth a little bit, but like you said, the public's probably got something to do with that. And I will say, according to a service I do follow, Kansas City's getting 73% of the tickets and 77% of the money. So to be honest, it's kind of scary to back the Chiefs because typically I like the fate of the public in general. However, you know, it's just, it's hard because the Ravens destroyed the Niners earlier this year in San Francisco, but then the Chiefs just dominated the Ravens in Baltimore. So very tough, right? But you know, I got to back my homes here. I mean, the Niners, they're likely not even here if Gibbs doesn't fumble that ball. I mean, if he doesn't fumble the ball, the Lions probably drive the ball a little bit down the field. Say they don't even kick a field goal or score, they're at least going to punt the Niners deep, and then it completely changes momentum, and who knows what would have happened. But, you know, that Gibbs fumble was really the turning point in the game, in my opinion. And, you know, if 
the Lions ran all over San Francisco. Don't you think Pacheco is going to run all over San Francisco? Because San Fran can't stop the run. I think Andy Reid's going to do that for sure. Uh, keep in mind Purdy. You know, he's looked suspect at times. I know he had a good game with the legs the last game. But, I mean, he threw – he should have thrown two interceptions versus the Packers. I mean, that game could have went way different too. So, I mean, I just got to back the Chiefs. I got to back Mahomes here. It's like, you know, Yogi Berra said it's deja vu again. And I just – I'm – I could be wrong, but I'm just not going to be the guy that bets against Patrick Mahomes. I don't I don't know about you. What do you think? There is the big – there's such a massive – it's crazy to say that Mahomes' legacy is at stake. But in a sense, it's sort of – there's a massive difference, put it this way. This is his fourth Super Bowl in five years. There's a big difference between being two and two and three and one. You know what I'm saying? Like we almost forget that he lost that one Super Bowl to Tom Brady – uh, it was no fault of his own. The offensive line was depleted, and they got lit up. That's the way you beat them, very similar to Tom Brady. Can San Francisco get to Mahomes, not just sack him, but disrupt him for real, which is normally like next to impossible, but we'll hit it on the other side of more. This is four trades. Right as a four and a half point underdog at kickoff last week, they're headed back to the Super Bowl yet again. They were phenomenal, Vinny, in the first half, and they were phenomenal against Miami in the first half too. A lot of motivated players, and look, you got to hand it to them: youthful players playing in a great system by Spagnuolo. And we know how great of a big game coordinator Steve Spagnuolo is. Newswire only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's a beautiful time. NBA players are going wild. If I had to guess, a lot of people are going to get real angry. No defense. No defense. No defense. Oh, uh, see, I want people to understand this, okay? Because we're always honest. When I take that big pause, that means we're thinking about betting big. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means individual success. He should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon, not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea. What the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime a time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race. That was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. We didn't like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
This is Sports Rage. I am RNC. 113-104 for the Golden State Warriors. So it looks like we're going to be on the right side of this one. As I stated before tip-off tonight on the show, that, you know, you look at Golden State. They lost that heartbreaker to Sacramento, the 134 to 133, whatever the hell it was, 133 to one. You know what I mean? That was a one-point game. Curry had a chance late. He had the ball, and he dribbled off his foot, and they lost. And then that Laker game was insane on Saturday night. It really was crazy. <laughs> like Curry hit a three with, like, two seconds left or something. The crowd goes crazy. And then, you know, they, they, the Lakers got fouled with 0. 0.7 seconds left. Wild, uh, wild game. They were due. Like, they, they had to break through. And it uh, looks like they're going to do it. They're up 113-104 right now. All right. Uh, you can follow Wes on Twitter at the Sniper Picks. And we're talking about the, the, the Super Bowl a little bit right now. And, you know, to me, and you look at Kansas City, you look at Kansas City, and it really is amazing how, like, you talked about San Francisco, and it's true. Like, San Francisco have looked very vulnerable. Green Bay had them on the ropes. Detroit had them on the ropes. Fine. But you know what? The Buffalo Bills also had the Kansas City Chiefs on the ropes. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? What if Bass doesn't miss the kick? And what if, you know, what if Allen dumps it off to Diggs instead of going into the end zone? Yet there's something about Kansas City that makes you do these things as well. I think there's too much that we, you know I mean? Oh, but this other team screwed up. You feel that pressure, man, because Mahomes doesn't make mistakes. So that's the problem, right? You make one little mistake, they take advantage of it, and Mahomes doesn't. And I brought it up as we are going to the break. This year, the Chiefs were one in three straight up if Mahomes was sacked three or more times in the game. So he's only sacked three times in a game four times this year. They lost three of those games, right? But it's next to impossible to get to him because he gets rid of the football. And what's really frustrating if your team's, if you saw Baltimore did it all the time, Wes, was first down, second down, success. Boom. Like, all right, you're in third and 13. <laughs> you're in third and 11, Pat. Boom. Every damn time, bro, he hits Kelsey. He hit Val- 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 Valdez Scantling down the field. He hits Rice. He did it against the Bills. We had him in third and long all night long. He kept on converting. Like, it's you need to play perfect football to beat this guy. That's the problem. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, one big key to this game that not too many people are talking about is what happened to Chase Young? Because I, I don't see him doing anything. I haven't seen him really involved in many plays this whole postseason. And, you know, they went and got him from Washington. And as soon as they got him, I'm like, oh, game over. That San Francisco defense is going to be something to, you know, a force to be reckoned with. But he hasn't really shown up. Uh, I mean, I don't really know what's going on there. He Both, made a few uh, plays you know, in the second half. But, you know, I'm sure you saw the video where he quit on a play, right? On a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. He could have, like, yeah. you know, he kind of just half-assed it. In the second half, and I don't know, like, if somebody spoke to him, one of his teammates, or the second half, he did come up with a couple of nice nice plays, especially with the run game. There was a couple of nice stops that Young was part of there. But you're right. They're going to need him, like, point blank. Yeah. Like, Bosa can't do it by himself. 100%. Mahomes, he's just an assassin. He's been around the block. It's hard to believe he's only 27. It feels like he's 33. It just feels like you've seen Mahomes do this over and over and over again. But, uh, you know, it's obviously the most depleted receiving corpse that he's ever had. I mean, Valdez Scantling can't catch a cold half the time, but, you know, he made a couple catches last game. Um, it's going to be a great game. I think Mahomes does what he does. He's going to make it tough on the Niners. Uh, Bosa's got to get to him. That pass rush for sure. They, they got to put pressure on him, similar to the way Tampa did in that Super Bowl when, you know, Mahomes had no offensive line. You know, I, I remember in that Super Bowl, Mahomes ran like, the equivalent of three football fields <laughs> because his line was terrible. So San Fran's got to get to him if they can, if they do, they got a shot. I mean, they're favored. So technically they're supposed to win the game, but I, mean, I don't see it that way. I just, I think San Fran's going to have trouble. I think the running game for Kansas city is going to play a big part of it. I said before, I think Pacheco, in fact, I like Pacheco almost to win MVP over Mahomes. to be honest, if the chiefs win the super bowl. That's pretty bold. Uh, we'll get you the number here right now. That's pretty bold because they've listed, they've got it. What's Pacheco? 35 to 1 right now on our screen here. That's not bad. That's kind of like uh, when I came on here and gave you the Texas Rangers at 12 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to let that one go. As you know, you can hang on to that until there's a new World Series champ, actually. I'll give you that. You, 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 can, you can hang on to that. Hey, oh, it's bold 35. Listen, it's a quarterback based award. 
except on the other side, you got Brock Purdy, and there's no guarantee that they're going to give it to Brock Purdy. Um, it just because San Francisco wins, I think McCaffrey's the guy. So Pacheco, you're the first one to throw Pacheco uh, out there. One thing yeah. too, I'll say, I like Brock Purdy, so I'm not one of these. Oh, Brock Purdy, um, you know, Brock Purdy can't get it done, or he's just a game manager, and any any of this type of stuff. I don't buy into any of that stuff. But at the same point in time, he looked nervous, like he has looked nervous in these games early. He looked nervous early against Green Bay. He was shaky early against Detroit. He was like, you know, sailing balls. What woke him up is when he started running. He he ran once like he was terrible. Like in the second half started, you know what I mean? He, he threw like this little pass. It was lucky it was caught. But then he had to take off and he got lit up, Wes. He got smoked. And it's almost, you know what I mean? It's like a goalie. Right, you got to get into the game somehow, and sometimes getting hit in the face with a puck is is what it is. And it was almost like when he got hit, he got up, and it was like, okay, I can do this. Now I understand. Okay, now I'm here. Now I'm here. Like I wasn't here before. Now I'm here, guys. And you saw the confidence, started throwing the ball a bit more. But I I do have my concerns that Brock Purdy is going to struggle early in the football game again, and. San Francisco can't keep digging these holes, man. You're not playing the Packers and the Lions now. You're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, Purdy needs to be calm, cool, and collected for 60 minutes in this game. But I can't lie and say I'm not worried about that. Yeah, no, 100% agree. He's not at home. This game's, you know, on the road. It's in Vegas. It's a big stage. Um, yeah, he's he's got to not throw interceptions. He's got to not fumble the ball. Um, he's, you know, he's got a lot of playmakers on his side, but, I mean, we'll, well see that's it. Happens. Shanahan's going to call a, a, a system, bro, where, like, he doesn't have to, right? Quick hits to Debo, get it off, just get it to, to McCaffrey, quick hits. And you saw that in the, in the in a game against Detroit. They stopped throwing the ball down the field, and everything was quicker because every time he threw the ball, bro, it nearly got intercepted or would. Like, it was a problem. He doesn't have enough zip on his ball, and it was like he was guiding it instead of just sort of, all right, let, let it go. And that's nerves. So, like I said, I'm concerned about his nerves here against this Kansas City secondary. It's been pretty damn good. Sure. I, I, I got a random question for you here, Gabe. So, I was thinking about this earlier today. So, so you take Mr. Irrelevant, right, the last pick of the draft two years ago, right, and you take the first pick of the next draft, which is Bryce Young, to the Carolina Panthers, and you, you switch those two guys, hypothetically. So, Bryce Young is on the Niners Brock Purdy is on the Panthers, right? So what's your opinion on that? Because I think that Brock Purdy would be on the verge of being out of the league and Bryce Young would probably be pretty successful, you know, under the tutelage of Shanahan and that offense and having all those weapons. And, you know, I think Bryce Young's kind of getting a bad rap where, you know, he just, he's got nothing in Carolina. You put him on that San Francisco offense, him and Purdy are, I mean, he's smaller than Purdy, but. I mean, I don't know. What's what's your opinion? I just thought of that today, and I was thinking, I was like, I should ask Gabe about that. What do you think about that, Gabe? No, I agree with you. I don't think, number one, I don't think it's fair to judge Bryce Young after this first year. It was sort of like Trevor judging Trevor Lawrence after the Urban Meyer stuff. It was a train wreck. It was a disaster. They you know, get a coach in here, get some players around him. They traded DJ Moore. So, you know, I, I give him the benefit of the doubt, but I do agree with you. Like, if you, like Brock Purdy, I think Brock Purdy's good. Right, he is good. They, you know, and he he runs their offense, and they they trust him. But let's say you took Brock Purdy and put him on the Houston Texans. Like, let's use C.J. Stroud as an example. Right. San Francisco would be as good. You know what I mean? They like yeah. if they would they would be as good, and these other teams would not be. <laughs> so let's just yeah. be real. But it doesn't mean that Brock Purdy can't win. But if he does win a Super Bowl. He joins the list of quarterbacks, sort of the Brad Johnsons of the world, right? Yeah. And you guys remember Brad Johnson won a Super Bowl with the Bucks, yeah? A hey, Florida State seminal quarterback. Good quarterback, obviously, yeah. you know, hey, good college career, good quarterback, could throw the ball. Probably one of the least nondescript quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl, all right? Like, put it this way. Look yeah, at Aaron yeah. Rodgers has milked one Super Bowl win. Well, Brad Johnson's won a Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, Mark Rippon, yeah. another one. Mark yeah, Rippon with Washington. You know, Trent good Rupert. had that he, man. He wasn't great. Yeah. He would. Mark Rippon was the MVP that day. You know, he threw yeah. three or four touchdowns that day. So like Brock Purdy can do it, bro. Yeah, 
No, I agree. He's got the weapons. I mean, we'll see what happens. They're, they're favored. Like I said, they should win the game. But I just – I can't go against Patrick Mahomes. I can't – I would rather go I, – I would rather take Mahomes and lose than go against them and win. I just – I can't do it. Yeah, I, I understand that. I, it's like, yeah, it's like betting against Floyd Mayweather or something. There's certain that, yeah. like – dude, last week, all week, I was like, I like Baltimore. I like Baltimore. As this point spread grew and reality kicked in, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm laying five points to Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not doing that. So I ended up teasing the, the Kansas City Chiefs, and I got screwed over because it was it was so damn low scoring. I do think there's going to be points in this game, though. I really do. I think I think 47 and a half is just a little light. I understand that Casey's defense and you know is this and that, but Mahomes and Kelsey and Rice and Pacheco. They're going to score on San Francisco. Like we just saw absolutely. Detroit go up and down the field on them, right? We just saw Green yeah, Bay and Aaron absolutely. Jones light them up. Aaron Jones was killing yeah. them. Like, Pacheco's going to have a big game, guys. We'll take a look at Pacheco props. But Pacheco went over his rushing yard prop, guys, against Baltimore. It was 60, uh, 62 and a half, 63 type thing. He ended up with, like, yeah. 68. He barely got there, but he got there. And I would expect that he gets there again in the Super Bowl. More or less on the other side. This is sports right Right as a four and a half point underdog at kickoff last week. They're headed back to the Super Bowl yet again. They were phenomenal, Vinny, in the first half, and they were phenomenal against Miami in the first half, too. A lot of motivated players, and look, you got to hand it to them. Youthful players playing in a great system by Spagnolo, and we know how great of a big game coordinator Steve Spagnolo is. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. The gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's a beautiful time. NBA players are going wild. If I had to guess, a lot of people are going to get real angry. No defense. No defense. No defense. Uh, See, I want people to understand this, okay? Because we're always honest. When I take that big pause, that means we're thinking about betting big. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means individual success. He should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decision. No idea. What the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime a time. Yard for a grand slam. At the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race. That was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got big. Yeah. Yeah. Did like a two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. A 
Gonzaga are murdering Loyola Marymount right now. It's 83 to 40. I got over 151 and a half in this game. There's six and a half minutes left. The in-game total is 149 and a half. I'm kind of screwed. Gonzaga have the bench on the floor. And Loyola Marymount are stuck at 40. Maybe we get lucky. UNLV are up four only on Fresno. I see Fresno are plus six and a half. I have no sane reason to do this besides UNLV are big chokers. <laughs> so Sniper West with us. And, I, you know, this game's probably going to come down to the wire. I wouldn't trust UNLV if I laid points with them here, the seven and a half. So I think Fresno could be live at plus six and a half. We'll try to cry home the, uh, the over of Loyola Marymount and Gonzaga. So uh, last week you were on and you gave us um, uh, you gave us Alabama and the Iron the Iron Court Bowl um, instead of the Iron Bowl it was Auburn Alabama Alabama ended up getting it done good call tomorrow you're looking at that Wake Forest Pittsburgh game Pitt had been pretty good at home what's your take on this game? Well I'll tell you what the line's moving like crazy already but um, you know Wake Forest is coming in here they're fifth place in the ACC the ACC is actually down this year in general. You know, only uh, UNC and Duke are in the top 25 currently. By the way, I don't know if you heard about this Cooper Flag kid from Maine, Gabe, but he already committed to Duke. That kid is the truth. I don't know if you've seen any film on him or. or I whatnot, have seen him. Yeah, he's gonna be. Yeah, he's gonna be real. Duke is gonna be really good next year. But so Wake Forest, they're 13 and six. Um, you know, in general, they're five and three in conference play. But one thing about the Demon Deacons is they don't play well on the road. They're one and four away from their home floor, which is not good. And then you have Pitt. They're 12 and eight and three and six in conference play. And honestly, Wake's probably the better team here. But this line opened at one, uh, Wake Forest minus one. And now it's, you know, Wake Forest plus one. So the Sharps are all over Pitt, as was I earlier in the day. So, you know, the Panthers are probably going to get up for this game, in my opinion. Both teams are off losses. Wake lost to UNC, which there's no shame in because UNC is really good this year. Uh, Pitt lost to Miami, 72-68, to and that was a tightly contested game. But I do think Pitt continues to play. They have momentum here. Um, they did just beat Duke prior to that Miami loss, so I think the Panthers are going to play uh, well. Duke. Uh, it's going to be – yes, yes, absolutely. So, you know – uh, why can they not, you know, beat Wake Forest on their own home floor here, right? So um, the line has already moved two points in Pittsburgh's favor. And, yeah, I, I think the Panthers are going to play really well tomorrow. I like the Panthers. March Madness rapidly approaching after the Super Bowl. That's what will take uh, center stage. This year the Final Four is in Glendale, Arizona, which is pretty cool. It's cool. You know what's cool about it? They have a sports book at the, uh, at the stadium. Yeah. which is really cool. I know we did our show there last year. So check out the MGM Sportsbook, everybody, if you're at the Final Four. And uh, check out the MGM Sportsbook next week. Uh, we'll be there all week long, 5 o'clock Las Vegas time until 7 o'clock, two-hour shows. We'll be kicking it, breaking down the big game. We're going to have all kinds of guests. Uh, we got some cool guests uh, lined up for next week from uh, all different uh, walks of life from the sports world and more. All right, so before we get you out of here, um, tomorrow's a big game. So, yeah, right now Pittsburgh is one and a half point favorites against Wake. The total is 143. We went over some of these games earlier on the program. Uh, Purdue are laying 13 tomorrow to Northwestern. Um, you got Penn State and Rutgers. Rutgers are seven point home favorites. Connecticut laying 12 and a half to Providence. Big man on campus was with us earlier. He likes the Yukon Huskies laying the chalk uh, in this game. Auburn lay 18 and a half to Vanderbilt. St. Mary's minus 13 and a half hosting Santa Clara tomorrow night. And we talked about this New Mexico uh, team. What do you think about that game? Boise State getting 10 and a half points against New Mexico because New Mexico have been just drilling teams in the pit. Um, 10 and a half is a pretty big spread. The total is 151 in this game. Boise have been a very good team this year against the spread as well. Yeah, you know, um, I don't really like doing double digits. I, I realize that college basketball is different than the NFL, is different than the NBA, and sometimes you got to lay big chalk if, if you like a side. I get that. I still just don't like laying double digits in general. But I will say, New Mexico, they're 15-5 and five ATS this year, so they are covering spreads. Um, Boise, not so much. Um, Boise's 3-1 and one on the road. New Mexico. That's State. what I was going to say. They're uh, good on the road as a dog, though, Boise. They've stepped up in these spots. Yeah. Yeah. New Mexico, they're 11-0 at home, so they definitely play well at home. Um, you know, uh, 
I don't really have a lean per se on this game, but I will say that um, I, if I had to lean any direction, I'd probably lean New Mexico here. You know, if it would surprise people that the number one team against the spread in college basketball this year right now, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, 17 and 3 ATS. Richmond is 15, 4 and 1. Southern Utah, how about that? <laughs> Southern Utah, uh, 14 and 4 ATS. Texas A&M Corpus Christi, 13, like all these, like, how about these schools? Texas A&M Corpus Christi, 13 and 4 ATS. Moorhead State, 13 and 4 ATS. Eastern Washington, 13 and 4. Uh, 13, 4 and 1. We were talking about the Gamecocks earlier, bro. This team's on fire, man. They keep winning as, a, you know, tonight they won as a 14-point underdog against Tennessee. They beat Kentucky uh, last week. There's quite a few teams that are killing it ATS, and I always, you know, we should be always remember to look at the bottom of the page and the worst teams in college basketball, and don't be scared to pick on them. Old Dominion, 4-16 and 16 ATS. P- uh, Pacific, 4-16 and 16 ATS. Detroit, 5-17. and 17. Stonehill, 5-16. and 16. How about this, man? Arkansas, complete money burners, 5-15 and 15 ATS. Missouri, 5-15 and 15 ATS on the season. And as much as it pains me, the Michigan Wolverines have only covered six games this year. They're terrible. Uh, fortunately, yeah. they're great at football, but the basketball team absolutely blows. So before we get you out of here, any of these other games catch your eye? You gave us the Pittsburgh game. Are you considering any of these other games tomorrow? Well, um, I'm still doing some research, honestly, but I do have an NBA lean for you that I'll give to you right now if you like. So um, I was looking at the Suns and the Nets um, tomorrow. So, you know, you got Durant going back into Brooklyn here. The Suns are red hot, no pun intended, right? And uh, they're eight and two the last 10 games. Um, they did just have setbacks to the Magic and the Pacers, uh, but they did just beat Miami by 13 last night. And, you know, the Suns are kind of coming together with Durant and Booker and Beal. It's kind of like, you know, the Clippers with, PG-13 and Kawhi and James Harden took them a little while to finally gel, right? So, I bet, you know, those three guys, they're scoring 20 each per game at least. So, they're moving the ball. Uh, They're, you know, they're playing really well. Brooklyn did just beat them 116 to 112 in December back in Phoenix. So, the Suns do have revenge and they're on a roll in general and they're only laying three and a hook right now. And the Nets are actually also off two straight wins too, so they can let their guard down here. And I just I like the Suns; they're playing well, they're coming together. Keep in mind, so Durant's going back to Brooklyn. I mean, he's probably going to want to show Jay Z and company who's boss. He doesn't want to lose to Brooklyn. He's probably going to be in his guy's ear and say, "Hey, we got to get up for this game. I don't want to go, you know, lose to the lose to the Nets." Let's go. He was asked. Out, so. He was asked about a video tribute returning to Brooklyn. And I liked his answer. He goes, video tribute for what? He goes, I was there three years. We never, we never won Jack squat. He goes, yeah. I wouldn't give me a video tribute. He goes, no, no video tribute. Like, yeah. He goes, he basically said, he goes, it was terrible. It was a terrible experiment. What happened? I don't think they're going to blame him. I don't think he'll get booed in the same way that, you know, he would at some spots. And I think Brooklyn Net fans sort of understand how everything went down uh, there. But you're right. Listen, I was on the Suns last night. Miami had big problems, bro. Miami are just not a good, you know what I mean? Like, they go on these little playoff runs once in a while with Jimmy Butler, I get it. But overall, this is not a very good Miami Heat team. And I didn't understand why they were three-point favorites last night against the Suns. So now the Suns are laying uh, the points. And speaking of the Heat, uh, the Sacramento Kings are one-point road favorites in South Beach against the Heat tomorrow night. Total 229. Uh, Where can people find you? Sniper West uh, on Twitter, the Sniper Picks, and online, where can people find your picks there, Wes? So I do uh, I do free plays every day on my YouTube channel, which is at Sniper Picks with an S. And my uh, Twitter is at the Sniper Picks. You can find me over there as well. Uh, all kinds of stuff. We do live plays and second half plays on Twitter. So go ahead and check that out. And thank you for having me on, Gabe. Really appreciate it. Always a big fan of the show. And um, yeah, man, until, uh, until next time. Thanks again. Hey, may the winners be yours. Always a pleasure, my man. Thanks for the time. There's our boy. <laughs> Uh, Sniper West, the Sniper Picks. All right, great stuff. Speaking of our boys, we got uh, Joe Lisi, who is a ranting, our daily clip from coast to coast. Of course, Mike Carver is in on Tuesdays and Wednesdays for the great Scott Farrell uh, today. Uh, Lisi, Lisi's fired up for the Super Bowl. Lisi's always fired up, though. How about this? 75% of the bets are on the over, 47 and a half. Uh, This is at BetMGM. The overs... 
six and 14 in Kansas City Chief games uh, so far this year. 75%, Joe. Still a lot of bets to come in, though. We got a long way to go. Uh, I like the over, too. You did that on purpose. You did it I on know purpose. I did. You told me you liked that, it on purpose. Here's so the thing. I, I can that. never take it under in a Super Bowl unless we're talking in the 50s. And the reason why I say that is because, again, they're, they're not going to want to be, oh, let's just, you know, uh, have a second half lead and run it and get out of Dodge. They're going to push points. It's almost like a national championship game as it relates to college football. Uh, you know, if it's in the mid-50s, that's a different story. But, I mean, basically, you got to get the 31-24 to get the over, right? I mean, and we understand that Kansas City has a problem getting to 30. Nobody's put up 30 points on that defense yet. But, again, they've dictated the tempo of a lot of these games. Jumped up on Miami. They jumped up last week early on in regards to the Buffalo game. They jumped up in regards to last week against Baltimore. So if San Francisco jumps up and has a first half lead, what does that do to Pat Mahomes in that offense? They're not going to be able to run it just the way they want with Isaiah Pacheco. So give me the over. I agree with Joe Lisi as far as the total of this game is concerned. Historically, the Super Bowl has been a higher scoring game, right? You know, you've got two teams laying it on the line here. Offenses are generally ahead of the defenses as well. Generally, you have to have, they say defense wins championships, but you have to have a good offense to actually make it and put points up on the board. Last year's Super Bowl, 38-35. Uh, went over the number. Rams and Bengals two years ago was a little bit lower scoring. This one stayed under. It was 23-20. The year before, it was also low scoring, 31-9. We had two unders in a row. Uh, the Chiefs and the, the San Francisco game was 31-20, so they got the 51, the same two teams. The Patriots and the Rams was 13-3. That was the lowest scoring Super Bowl ever. But before that, 41-33, 34-28, 28-24s, like seven of the last 10 have gone over 47 and a half. All right, and we love Joe Lisi, but I like Joe's math when he goes, hey, the total is only 47 and a half. He goes, 31-24 gets you there. Yeah, that's like seven points over the number, Joe. Yeah. 25-23 <laughs> gets you there. 26-23 gets you there. 31-24 is alternate line. Uh, math with Joe Lisi. So, uh, yeah, 47 and a half, but it is true. Like, you know, is it would it, would it surprise anybody if it was 27-24 this game? And that's, that's the score I sort of keep coming back to. Maybe a little higher, you know, 31-27, 30-27 type of deal. 26-23 still gets you there as far as the total is concerned at 47 and a half. I brought it up earlier. Bill Vinovich will be the, uh, the, the referee of the Super Bowl. And ironically enough, he did the Super Bowl the last time these two teams played. He only called nine penalties for 69 yards. And I think they're going to let him play in this Super Bowl as well. Outright as a four and a half point underdog at kickoff last week. They're headed back to the Super Bowl yet again. They were phenomenal, Vinny, in the first half, and they were phenomenal against Miami in the first half, too. A lot of motivated players, and look, you got to hand it to them. Youthful players playing in a great system by Spagnolo, and we know how great of a big game coordinator Steve Spagnolo is. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
Oh, it's a beautiful time. NBA players are going wild. If I had to guess, a lot of people are going to get real angry. No defense, no defense, no defense. Uh, see, I want people to understand this, okay? Because right, we're always honest. When I take that big pause, that means we're thinking about betting big. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the Trophy early line. and what it all means. Individual success. He should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news. Trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, quarterbacks. coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they In are. game live. Just prime a time. yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12-2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late bad. night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid yeah. information. Then like a two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We're in a three-minute warning uh, right now. Shout out to all of our guests for joining us uh, this evening. Andrew McKinnis from wagertalk.com, uh, big man on campus, threw it down with us. The Raging Redhead, uh, Cam Stewart, uh, the Sniper Picks, West Sniper West in the house tomorrow night, the Wicked Wednesday, always a strong lineup. Our boy Brady Quinn uh, kicking once. Can you believe, too, we've had four consecutive triple-digit PGA winners so far to start the tour here season. Like, and when I say triple digit, I mean, like, more than 100 to 1. Like, it's crazy, man. 125 to 1s, 400 to 1s, 300 to 1s. <laughs> Some crazy-ass stuff. Speaking of which, too, we'll get into sort of, um, you know, the Super Bowl, what, we're 12 days away. Super Bowl strategy. Now, this there's no real point spread for this game. The game's basically a pick em, but I'm a big fan of this, and I don't mind. So, let, let's say there's, like, a bigger favorite. And you know they're going to win, but you're not, you don't want to lay minus 400 or something like that, right? You're like, yeah, I'm not going to lay 12 points or 10 points, and they're minus 350 or minus 400, but they're going to win the game. Take them with the Super Bowl, right? So if I like San Francisco, I'm going to start to do it. I'm, you know, I haven't started yet, but I'll start to stockpile. All right, you know what? I'll take this team in game right now at minus 350, and I'll, I'll parlay it with the, the 49ers and the Super Bowl. And or the Chiefs. And you could do it with both, and you end up with a bunch of plus money plays. You know what I'm saying? So you'll go into Super Bowl Sunday. You won't even have to bet the game because you're going to be like, man, I've already got like nine parlays to close out. Like, you know what I mean? And I got both sides at plus money. Like, you can end up with, with plus money on both sides. Like, you play a bunch, you know, I'll put San Francisco. And the other ones, I'll put Kansas City. Right? And then you can come back with teasers, and you can win, like, almost all the bets at the plus money. Like I said, I don't like hedging. I don't like I don't like placing a bet that eliminates a bet they already have. You know, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna say, no, no, you know what? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna add to this. I'm gonna come at it from this different angle right now and we, we can win them all, baby. Other than that, you're on your own. Later.